So talk to me about what this film teaches about honesty. Probably could have saved some miserable moments if you had kept it 100 with your wife, right? Well, I think Dave is being unfairly <laughs> criticized in this whole thing. I mean, you know, he was doing the best he could for the situation that was in the hand that he was dealt with. And, uh, <laughs> he <laughs> no, thought he could handle it. I he thought, thought no, it, it was one of those things where he thought he could handle it. He, he wanted to protect his wife from the situation. He felt that he could handle mm. her um, mm. in an appropriate way and just long enough until we until the baby came into our lives. I don't know how case. I hired a net, uh, um, surrogate that cute in the first place. I think it was the hair pulled back in the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you hear how he said that? He was like, yeah. <laughs> and that's the next thing. I never heard something take four years and the years get progressively, you know what I mean? You talked about the position that you're in in this film. And it, yeah. Like, uh, you get in a couple different positions with two different women. I well, gotta ask you about how that works. Well, one of them had particular skills. You know how, <laughs> you know how <laughs> Liam Neeson's? Liam Neeson says that I'm a man with a particular set of skills. <laughs> <laughs> now, we all love the funny Regina Hall. In this film, we see a more serious side. What was the challenge of that? I love them both. I mean, I think with this one, you know, it was a totally different intensity and just feeling and mood in the movie. So you're just trying to tap into that so that audiences feel, you know, um, comfortable and they want to go on the journey with, with Laura and John. Okay, now I have a serious question for you. As a woman, mm -hmm. you know, we all feel that pressure to have children. Society kind of puts it on us. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about maybe the burden of that and how that plays into this role and also just even a personal thing, like you said, mm -hmm. when choosing a surrogate, you might want to not rush into that decision, but. Yeah. I mean, I do. I think, you know, when you're when you're growing up, you always have the ideal of, you know, what you're going to do in family and when you're going to get married and have your first kid. And then I think life happens and every journey is so different. And I've kind of, um, realize that you know it's um I, I remember a woman said you know it's a tragedy to have them it's a tragedy not to have them you just choose and so i think you know um things happen so differently i mean i think there's a part of you that feels like but there's a way to be a mother in so many different ways now um i just think getting comfortable with whatever whatever god allows or doesn't allow in your life is really a part of womanhood. Just for you guys, can you relate to having people, you know, obsessed with you? Of course, as Regina said, people well, are well, well, Regina does. I mean, she has that on a daily basis. <laughs> I mean, you know, she can't walk down the street without having men obsessed over her. No, no listen. No, it's true. Just we be honest had, they, He had so no, many. No, just be honest. All the ladies on, on these last just, radio uh, interviews, <laughs> they didn't know I was there. Just, I think yeah. they were like, Oh, Regina's there to get coffee for more chestnut. <laughs> I went and got him some coffee, That's not true. some hot chocolate. I didn't? No. I did. I got him everything. I got him hot coffee, hot chocolate. Oh, I forgot his tea. Somebody get more <laughs> some tea.